So this is what we'll be making in Unreal Engine today. It's a full game with scores and a timer and these cubes that we can collect. And this also has a user interface with end screen, which can display you win or game over and a replay button. So let's get started. So this is what we made in our previous video where we made the ball and its movement and the ability to jump. So today we will add the cubes and uh, the score logic and also a timer. So let's go to the content folder. I will make a new blueprint here and uh, I will inherit from actor. I will call it BP cube. We will open the blueprint and we will add a simple cube here. Now in the cube, we also need to change the collision. From block all dynamic, we will change it to overlap all dynamic. We need to change it so we can overlap our player with this cube and uh, increment the score. Let's also make this cube the default scene route. Let's also create a new material for this cube so it looks a little bit better. I will call it cube material. We will open it and uh, we need a constant three vector. So this is a color basically and if we double click here, we should be able to choose a color. We will make it a little bit yellow color. Now we also need a simple constant. We will multiply this vector by this simple constant. I will make it 100. And we will connect it to the MSF color. So our material will be MSF. We will save the material. And back in our cube, we can select the material. But before that, let's make sure that in the content drawer, this material is selected. So in the content drawer, the new material that we just made, it should be selected. And then we can scroll down and under materials, we can click this little icon. So it will apply the selected material to our cube. Let's go to the event graph and to make sure that our cube rotates a bit so it looks a little bit better. So in the event tick, we will add some rotation to the cube. So we drag the cube here. It just makes a reference to the cube and we will add some rotation. We'll add local rotation. We will split the pin and let's multiply this delta seconds by 100. And we will connect this resulting value to X and Z. Now this will rotate our cube a little bit. Now in actor begin overlap, if you don't have it, you can get it by event actor begin overlap. So in actor begin overlap, we will see if the other actor is our player. We can do that by casting it to BP player. Now we will be able to handle our increment score logic. Before that, let's go to the game mode blueprint and add the logic for score. So we will open the full blueprint editor and we will add a new variable. We will call it score. The type will be integer. By default, it will be zero. We will add a custom event. We will call the event increment score. Now to increment the score, we can get the score, add one to it, and then we can set the score. So this will add one to our score. Now let's go back to our cube. So here we can get our game mode blueprint. So get game mode. We need to cast it to the custom game mode that we just made. Now as our custom game mode, we should be able to call the custom event that we made. So it will be increment score. We need to increase the score and destroy the cube. We can do that by destroy actor. 
Now let's go back to the game mode blueprint. We want to display the score. So to display the score, we will need some widgets. So I will add a widget here under user interface, widget blueprint. We will use user widget and we will call it WBP game UI. Now in this widget blueprint, we need a canvas. So we will drag and drop the canvas panel. And under common, we also need some text. We will drag and drop the text here. Let's make it bigger. Let's increase the font size. Make it 48. And change the text to score. Let's duplicate it by Ctrl D. So if we press Ctrl D, we can duplicate it. Let's make it uh, make the text zero. And we need to make this variable because we will be using it later and uh, we will change the name to score text. Now let's duplicate it again. We can select and duplicate it by Ctrl D. We'll call it time. Let's duplicate this one, select this one and press Ctrl D. We will leave the text empty. Make sure this is variable and we will say timer text. Now let's go back to our game mode blueprint and in the begin play, in the begin play we want to add our widget to the screen. So we can create widget, select the class to the one that we just made. We can promote it to variable so we can use it later. Let's call it widget reference. And we can add it to viewport. We don't need the tick, so we can remove it. Now, since the widget is here, we can update the widget to display a different score. So let's do that. We will get the widget reference, we will get score text. We will set text, this one. If we connect it here, it will automatically convert this integer to text. Now let's also add our timer. So here we can set timer by event. We can make a custom event. We'll call it timer event. The time will be 0 0.01. This will be a looping timer, so it happens again and again. Let's make a variable. We call it time. Compile, and by default, we will set 1500. In this event, we will decrease the time. So get time minus 1 and set time. So we decrease the time and we can update the time on the widget as well. So get widget reference, get timer text, set text and it will automatically convert the type to text and we also need to check if the timer has reached zero. So if the timer has reached zero, we want to stop the timer so it does not go any lower. And we also want to display the end screen. So because we want to stop the timer, we will need to this reference later. So let's promote it to variable. We'll call it timer. And let's create a custom event. We'll call it we will call this custom event show end screen. We also want to take an input here. We will call it result text. So this will be either game over or you win. And the type will be text. 
so we need to check if the time has reached zero so we can compare it less than equal to zero and if we have reached zero we will need a branch here so if this is reached that means we lost so we will show the end screen result text will be let's just make it game over yeah that is better now in the increment score we need to check for the win condition so if we have collected all of the cubes we should win if we have collected all of the cubes before we lose we should win so first let's see how many cubes are there in the level so in the begin play we can get all actors of class we will select the class so it will be the one that we made the cube that we'll be collecting now we need to check how many of these are there so we will see its length and uh, we will create a new variable here we'll call it max score we will set the max score to this one so now we know how many of these actors are there in the level so when we increment score if our score is equal to the max score then we need a branch here and we want so we will show the end screen and we will say you win so that was increment score and our timer logic now let's see what we need to do in the end screen so let's also update the user interface a bit so here we will need uh, one more text so let's get the text so let's duplicate this one by control d and uh, we place it in the middle in the center and we will change the anchors of this text to this one so it will be in the center and let's align it to center let's also justify it to center so we want to make sure this is exactly in the middle this is big and exactly in the middle let's also change the font make it 64 see how human looks so this is how it should be by default we want this to be empty because we will be setting it from our blueprint so this text will be empty we also need a button here so let's drag and drop a button make it a bit larger change the anchors to the middle let's drag and drop text here so we can drag and drop the text inside the button and it will snap to the button let's change the text to replay let's also increase the size font size and we will handle the click of this button later for now let's just rename this button to replay button and yes this button is a variable by default we don't want this button to be visible so let's hide it we will look for visibility and set it to hidden let's also add a blur in the background so we will look for background blur and we want to add it exactly below this canvas panel and above this score let's also make this blur bigger and uh, let's also change the anchors we want to fill the screen we want to fill the screen let's also change the blur strength i will say five you can try different numbers if you want to by default this blur is hidden so look for visibility this is the default visibility we will need it later so note it and uh, we will say this is hidden by default we will change the name of this blur we will say blur yes this is a variable we will make it a variable because we will use it later so now let's go back to our game mode blueprint and uh, work on this event so we want to stop the timer so when this event happens we want to stop the timer 
and one more thing we want to do this only once so if any case if by any case our event gets fired twice or thrice we don't want to repeat what we did so we will use a do once node and then let's pause the timer let's also make the button and uh, the text and the blur visible so get our visit reference first let's set the text let's make sure this result text is variable let's make this result text rename it and we will say result text and make sure it is variable so we can use it in the blueprint so we will get result text we will say set text and it is this one let's also make the restart button visible replay button set visibility this is visible let's also make the blur visible so we will get the blur set visibility so here we will use the default visibility that it had and that was this one so one more thing we want to do is after the game is over we don't want the player to be able to move so let's set the input mode of the controller to user interface only because we also want to be able to control the user interface right and we don't want to be able to control the game so let's get our controller we will say set input mode ui only and we need to give it the widget to focus that will be this one we need to check this one so after the game is over we don't want our player to be able to move and if the player was already moving we also need to cancel it so we need to check this and we also want to show the mouse cursor so let's say let show mouse cursor yes and because we set the input mode to ui only here when we play the game again we need to be able to control the player so we need to set the input mode to game only in the begin play so let's go to the begin play get player controller set input mode game only flush the input now let's go back to the widget blueprint and select our button if we scroll down we can add the on click event so when the button is clicked we want to open our level again open level by object reference this is the one that we need we can select the level that we want to open that will be new world so that is the level that we just made right so this is the one that we will open so let's see if this works Let's add some cubes to the level. We can duplicate it by Control D. Let's see what happens when we do not collect all of these cubes. Yeah, so game over we lost because we did not collect the last one. So we can replay and uh, this is the game. So this is a very simple ball game in Unreal Engine. Here are these cubes to collect. This is score and a timer and uh, this widget with the replay button and the status of the game, if whether we won the game or whether the game was over.